table is. And like I said, I have some of these numbers up on the board. We're not going to use like some of these humongous numbers. You're not going to see these in a problem, but any of the perfect squares, most of these perfect cubes, and maybe, you know, maybe up to like 625 or so, not some of these huge numbers, but you'll see these in some problems today, but you'll be able to use this as a reference. Okay, now just to give you a couple little definitions, what we call the index of a root is the type of root you're taking. So my little example here says the fourth root of 81 is equal to three. So this is a fourth root, so the index is four. What you guys are used to seeing probably with a square root is just the radical sign. They don't write the number for the index in a square root. So if you just see a radical sign, the square root is implied. Don't typically see a two there but technically it would be for a square root. Any other root, there's going to be like a little number out in front. Okay, now the actual, just the radical sign is literally just this guy that goes around the number that you're taking whatever root of. Here I'm taking a fourth root. So that's your radical sign. It's just this little symbol here. And then what we call the radicand is what you're taking, the number you're taking the root of. So for this problem, that would be 81, <coughs> would be the radicand. So I'm taking the fourth root of 81. And then the answer is what we call the principal root. So the principal root here is three. So if I do the fourth root of 81, that is assumed to be positive three. Now, if you're dealing with an even root, you can have different answers. So I just put some little examples just right underneath here. If you had a negative out in front of this, so it's a little different than what I have typed there. So I have negative fourth root of 81, then that answer would just be negative three. So that's okay to do if you have a little negative out in front. When we get a little bit later into the unit, we are gonna do situations where we're gonna solve an equation. And if you introduce a root into a problem, then you put the plus and minus symbol. So if I do plus or minus the fourth root of 81, that actually has two answers. It could be three or negative three. But the principal root is assumed to just be the positive version. Okay, so I'm going to scooch this up and give you a little definition here. So the nth root of any real numbers, and that's important today, real numbers, A and B, and this says positive integer n. So if I have b to the nth power is equal to a, then the nth root of a is equal to b. That's the technical definition. I'm going to give you an example with some numbers here in a second, so it'll make a little bit more sense, I hope. So let's do, let's just do one that you guys know, right? So if I do 5 squared, so like where I had b to the n, right? 5 squared is just equal to 25, right? So if I do, this is what this is going to say, the square root of 25, then that is equal to 5. That's what that definition is trying to tell you. So we can reverse that exponent and change it into a root. Okay, let me do one that maybe you're not super familiar with. So let's say I had 2 to the third power. So that means 2 times 2 times 2, and that would be equal to 8. Now, if I change that into a root, so that's an exponent. If I change that into a root, what that would look like is the third root of 8 is equal to 2. And we're going to do a third, fourth, and some fifth roots today as well. Is anybody having a question about that definition so far? Okay, and I'm going to break these into two categories. So we are only talking about real answers today, and hopefully that will make a little bit more sense in a second. But if you take an even root, so I mean like a square root, fourth root, you might see a sixth root in a problem today. So if you take an even root and you have a positive number, so I'll just give you a little example. So like let's say I did the square root of 16, right? Then that's equal to 4, right? 4 times 4 is equal to 16, right? Okay, now let's say I did the square root of a negative number. So if I'm taking a square root, it means two numbers multiplied together give me that number underneath. What would you tell me for the square root of negative 16? 
It would be, it would have the I with it. Okay, so we're only interested, it, we're not going to do imaginary numbers in this unit, so don't worry about this. So if you get the square root or the fourth root or a sixth root of a negative number, this has no real root. If you were thinking that's 4i, that's correct, but we're not going to do imaginary numbers in this unit at all. So if you get the square root, fourth root, sixth root, negative number, you just don't even have to do the problem. You just say it doesn't have a real root. Because there's no way for me to multiply two numbers together to get negative 16 if they're real. Because if I did 4 times 4, that's positive 16. If you did negative 4 times negative 4, that's also positive 16. So there's no way for me to get a negative. That's not true if you have an odd root, though. All right, and these you guys are probably not as familiar with. So this would be like a cube root, fifth root. I highly doubt you'll see a 7th root on any question, but we could technically do that, but we could do like a ninth root or an 11th root. Um, but in this situation, so I'll give you a little example. Let's do, I'll just do the one I wrote up there. If I do the cube root of 8, that's equal to 2. Because 2 times 2 times 2, that's three numbers multiplied together. Give me 8, it's 2 times 2 times 2. If I do the cube root of negative 8, can I do that? Like, does anybody know what that is? Or would you say no real root? It's negative 2. So if you do an odd root of a negative number, the answer is negative. Okay, so I'll just show you real quick. If I do negative 2 times negative 2, right, that makes it positive 4. But then when I introduce that third, because I'm doing a third root, that gets me back to be a negative, because I have an odd number of negatives here. That would be equal to negative 8. So negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. And then times another negative 2 turns that back into a negative answer. So you can take an odd root, so like a 3 or a 5, of a negative number. All right, so a lot of these questions are very similar today. And I would have you, if you're not super familiar, reference that little thing at the top to kind of work through these questions. But I have them separated into like squares, thirds, fourths. And use that little thing at the top until you're a little bit more comfortable with the numbers for sure. But the key thing for each of these questions, it says find the real roots. The first set of examples here are square roots. So we don't want to use any imaginary numbers. If the answer would be imaginary, then just say that it doesn't have a real root. Okay, what would you guys write down if I did square root of negative 49? None. We're not, nope, can't do this. Nope. No real root there. Can I do the problem next to it? Yeah. Now, the negatives outside, what would you write down for this one? Negative 9. Negative nine. Done. That's it. As long as the negatives on the outside. Okay, there are two ways that you could do that third question that I have there. Both of these guys are, and this will be all the questions today, will end up being perfect whatever. So square, cube, fourth. You could just take, like, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 25 is 5. The answer would be 10. Or you can always multiply radicals together as long as they're the same type, so if they're both a square root. If I took and multiplied these together, 4 times 25 would give me square root of 100, would still be 10 as the answer. So there's a couple ways you could do that question. If you have division, which I do in the next question, I have 36 over 121, I would try to reduce the fraction first if I could. But um, in this case, you're not going to be able to reduce anything. If you can't, then what I would do, just take the root, in this case the square root, of the top and bottom separately. So anybody know square root of 36? 6. And then, I don't know, 121? 11. So then that's just your answer, 6 over 11. That's all you got to do. Okay, now, as we get going here, I don't think you're going to be as familiar with these numbers. So <coughs> feel free to look at the top of that. These are all cube roots in this next set of examples. Can anybody tell me what the cube root of 343 is? 7. Okay, so just literally done. All right, what about negative 125? Mm, not 9. Oh, no, no, we can. We can. Yeah, you can do this here. If it's a cube root, so... This means if you take negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, the, two, two, the first two would make it positive 25, but then the third one makes it negative. So it's okay to do negative as long as it's an odd root. So this is a third root. Really good. All right.
Anybody know cube root of one? One. Any any root of one is one. Okay, now 64 can be tricky because it's on multiple lists of perfect squares, perfect cubes, perfect fourths, perfect six. Can anybody tell me the cube root of 64? What do you think? Four. Okay. Sorry, I should have you guys raise your hand. So just one fourth would be my answer there. Okay, now I can do this next question because I can take the odd root of a negative number. So cube root of negative one would just be negative one. Can anybody raise your hand and tell me what the cube root of eight would be? Two. So this one would just be negative one half. All right, and then I got one more. I have the cube root 27 over 1,000. Feel free, look at that little chart at the top of the page. Can we raise your hand? What would you write down for the cube root of 27 over 1,000? Three tenths, that's it. Cube root of 27 is three, cube root of 1,000 is 10. That's your answer. Is anybody having a question? I'm really just practicing these with you to make you more familiar, hopefully, with those numbers at the top of the page there. Okay, what is, if you look at those numbers, I'm going to do the fourth root of 625. So what to the fourth power is 625? Five, done, that's it. Okay, now, can I do the next question? No, this is even. There's no way for me to multiply four of the same number together to get a negative because the negatives would all cancel out. So, no real root there. <clears throat> now, 256 and 625. So, I'm trying to think what to the fourth power would be 256 and what to the fourth power would be 625. So, can you guys look at that list and, or maybe you just know. What would you write down here? Four? What about the 625? Five. Done. Four-fifths would be your answer. Now, I can do the last problem. It has a negative out in front of the fourth root, so it would literally just be like negative one times our answer, which the any root of one is one. So this last question here would just be negative one. And then the bottom row I have there, these are fifth roots. Now, a negative under an odd root, you can do that. So fifth root of negative one is just going to be negative one. Negative out in front is totally fine. Um, 670, is it 6? Okay, I don't even know what it is. So this, when I write my answer, just be negative 6 since it has a little negative out in front. And then <clears throat> the last one, 5th through to 32, 2, and th th 243 is 3. Good deal. So 2 thirds would be your answer for that last one. Okay, is anybody having a question with the numbers? Because we're going to do variables on the back. Okay, once you guys get the hang of this, this is not hard to do, I promise. All right, so I just put a bunch of just practice problems at the top that are kind of simplified because I don't know if they do this skill in Algebra 1 anymore, so we're just going to kind of do it from scratch. So if you are taking a square root, cube root, fourth root of a variable, like how do you break that down? What you want to do is you want to divide the exponent that you're going to have under the radical by the index of the root. And I usually just say divide the exponent by the root when I say that, but technically it's dividing the exponent by the index of the root, which is the little number that's attached to if you have a cube root or a fourth root. If you have a square root, you're just going to have to remember it's like there's a little two out in front here. Okay, so how does this work? So my first part is just the square root of x squared. So if I follow what I just said to you, and you don't have to write this if you want to just write the answer, but I would take the exponent on the variable, which is 2, divide it by the index of the root, which is also 2. That would become 1. So this would just be x to the first, or just go ahead and put an x. If I have square root of x to the 26th, Again, you don't have to write this out, but what, would you, what you would do, take your exponent, which is 26, divide it by the index of the root, which is 2. 26 divided by 2 is going to change that exponent to be 13, and it gets rid of the radical when you do that. All of these questions you're going to work with today are going to be perfect squares, cubes, fours, whatever we're working with. 
Why would you put the little number in Yeah, anytime it's a square, or square root doesn't put the little number for the index. Just assume it's two. Otherwise, it should have a number. So if it doesn't have a number, it's a square root, and assume that that's two. Okay, now the next one's a cube root. All right, now, this works the same, and I've got some negative exponents in here, no big deal. So this would be negative 6 divided by 3 would be negative 2. Now, I wouldn't want to write that as my answer, right? Because that's not considered simplified if you got a negative exponent. So just remember from yesterday, if you got a negative exponent, we're just going to turn it into a fraction real quick, and then I'm going to move it and lose it. So this would simplify with no negative exponent to be 1 over x squared. Okay, who can raise your hand and tell me, what would you write for the cube root of x to the 18th? x to the 6th. Done. That's it. Okay, now the next one's a little weird. What if I do the 4th root of x to the negative 4? One over x. Yeah, one over x. It'd be x to the negative one power, and then we would just get rid of that negative exponent by turning it into a fraction real quick. Usually if you have one or negative one as an exponent, you're not going to see that negative one written there. It'll just be a positive one um, when they move it to the bottom of the fraction. Okay, what about the fourth root of x to the 32nd? Thirty-two divided by four? Eight? Okay, sorry, I about had a heart attack. All right, so <laughs> so it should be just x to the eighth. Uh, what if I did fifth through to x to the tenth? X squared, done. All right, now, the last one's a little tricky because I got a negative exponent. What would you write down for the fifth root of x to the negative 40th? Yeah. Yep, there you go. This would be 1 over x to the 8th. If you just divide the exponent by the root there, right, you got negative 40 divided by 5, which would give you x to the negative 8, and then just to take care of that negative exponent, so it's simplified, we're just going to turn it into a fraction. Okay, is anybody having a question? All right, now, we're just, I promise you, all of these are perfect, so you shouldn't have anything left under any of the radicals but just pay attention to whatever the index is so you know maybe which list you want to look at. I know I got that little thing on the front, but I do have these numbers up on the board too. So I've got like the squares, the cubes, the fourths, the fifths, if you're not familiar with the numbers. But I promise they're all nice, and that's true for the homework today too. So like on this first one, square root is what I have, 25x24, y8, all right? So literally take the square root of 25. What would you write? 5. And then what would my power on x be? Done. That's it. That's all you have to do. Anybody know from the front, fifth through to 32? Two. Two. Okay, now I got x to the 15th and y to the 20th. This is a fifth root. What would my exponent on the x be? Three. What would the y be? Four. Done. Nothing else to do there because those letters are different, so you're not going to multiply like bases. They're different variables there, so that's all you're going to do. Um, uh, I think this is 6, 4 through to 1296. 16 divided by 4, x to the 4th, 28 divided by 4, y to the 7th. That's all you got to do. Now, if you got some negatives, which I have mixed into some of these questions here as we go through. Um, so square root of 9 is 3, right? y to the 12th would be turning into y to the 6th. And I'm just going to put that, I'm just going to automatically put that negative exponent in the bottom, but I'm going to make it positive when I move it. So this should just be x to the fifth. If you're like, what the heck are you doing? That's all you have to do. You don't have to write out a bunch of work if this makes sense to you. Now, if you were like, where did you come up with that? You would have 3x to the negative fifth, y to the sixth. You would turn it into a fraction and move that negative exponent down. So if you need to write that step out, that's totally fine. If you want to just do it without, that's also totally fine. It's just up to you. But just know if you have a negative exponent in your answer, it's not considered simplified. So you just want to move it to the bottom of a fraction. All right, 2 16, the cube root is 6. And cube root for my exponents, we're just going to divide by 3. So 12 divided by 3, this would be a to the fourth. Now, 3 divided by 3 would be 1 cube root and a cube cancel each other out. 
Typically, if you see an answer key, it's not going to write an exponent of 1 there, so just be written as B for that question. Okay, now 81 can be tricky, so make sure you're looking at what root you're using. So this is a fourth root. So what to the fourth power is 81 is what that's asking you, and that's going to be 3. For your exponents here, uh, 20 divided by 4 is 5, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. I'm really just trying to get you guys familiar with these numbers. Okay, now, odd root, negative number, okay. So cube root of negative 27, it's just going to be a negative. Now, we are not putting this in the bottom of a fraction because it's just a negative number. It's not a negative exponent, so it would just literally be negative 3. And then 6 divided by 3 for my variable, c to the second. No, no fraction there. Sometimes people get tripped up. So negative number is not a negative exponent that you need to move. Okay, now, fifth root of negative 3125 is going to be negative 5. Okay, for odd root of a negative number, A is going to have an exponent of 10. Now, B has a negative exponent, so I'm just going to just do this automatically. I'm just going to put this in the bottom of the fraction to get rid of that negative exponent. 45 divided by 5 is going to give you 9. And again, don't move the negative 5 to the bottom. That's a negative number, not a negative exponent. So, don't do that. Only when the exponent's negative, you're going to move it to the bottom. Okay, so like this one just has a negative 1 in front of it. Okay, so I'm just going to have a negative as part of my answer. The cube root of 64 is 4. And because I got a negative exponent, or if you guys want to do it, you can do it like this. This would be negative 4t to the negative 10th. And I would just move the negative exponent down so it would become t to the positive 10. If that makes sense to you and you want to skip that step, that's totally fine with me. Just trying to get you familiar with these little exponent properties we were talking about yesterday. Okay. We got two more. Now, the, this one's a fourth root. So, 16. That can be tricky because it's on the square root list and it's on the fourth root list. So, what to the fourth power is 16? That's going to come out as a 2. Okay, now for the variables, we're just going to divide the exponent by the root. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, and negative 44 divided by 4 is negative 11. So then I just put y to the positive 11 on the bottom. If you're like, what the heck are you doing? This would be 2x squared y to the negative 11th, and I would just move that, move it and lose it to get rid of that negative exponent. And when you move it, you lose the negative. It makes it a positive exponent in the bottom. Okay, and I got one more. Again, you can take the odd root of a negative number, so third root of negative 1,000, negative 10. Don't move this to the bottom of a fraction. It's a negative number, not a negative exponent. Now, the x has a negative exponent, so that needs to go in the bottom of a fraction, and that would be negative 9 divided by 3 would be negative 3, positive 3 when we move it down to the bottom. And then y to the 27th, that's just going to stay on the top because that's positive. 27 divided by 3 would make that y to the 9. I know that was a lot of problems. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, let me have you do me one favor. The homework should just be the next page in the lovely homework packet that I gave you guys yesterday. And I'm going to go grab one real quick. Um, I just want to have you guys look at a problem because I didn't really do one similar to this. And I know there's a lot of problems on here, but it's just, I, I hope they go like really quick for you. Let me have you guys look at number 23 real quick. It's just right on the back page. Okay. Now, I promise, every single thing on here is a perfect whatever. It might be a perfect cube, perfect square, perfect fourth, whatever. Should not have any radicals left in any problems. We're going to deal with that tomorrow. Um, but what I want to do with this one here, just really quickly, if you're looking at that, you're probably looking at that list of numbers going, we don't see 250 on there, right? Here's what I would tell you to do. If you have something that you could simplify first, so inside here, I'm not going to take a cube root yet. I'm just going to simplify just using those exponent properties we were working on. So if I do negative 125 divided by 2, I can reduce that. Or negative 250 divided by 2, sorry, is negative 125. That's what I was trying to say. So then would you do that for the x and y's? 
Yeah, and I would do that to the X and Y. So we did these yesterday with our exponent properties. So I would just be like, okay, where do I have more X's, top or bottom? You'd tell me the top, and I'd ask you how many more, and you'd tell me three. So that would just simplify X to the third. And then I'd say, okay, where do we have more Y's, top or bottom? And you'd tell me the bottom. And I have 15 more, exactly. Now, I did not take a cube root at all. I just simplified that fraction. And now you guys, this will all be perfect once you actually take the cube root. Um, but maybe do that first. Any question that you see that you might have a fraction, if you can simplify it a little bit first, I would tell you to do that and then take whatever root you're working on. 